Namaste, Sai Ram. Thank you so much for this beautiful invitation. Uh, wherever Saroj goes, there's beautiful people, beautiful devotees. Um, I like to call Swami Baba. He's my, I was always with the Baba, right? My grandmother is Baba in Ukrainian. And so uh, Baba is my father. And he has called me into such unusual places. Uh, I've been very lucky to, to be involved in four traditions. When I was a little girl, only five years old, I would do this. And my mother, we never saw it on TV. It was never around. And she says, where, how did you, what are you doing? And I don't know. It just came natural. And um, the dancing, I've always been dancing since I was young. And I always would, would kind of do mudras when I was dancing as well when I was little. So, um, and I just found out recently, and I shared with some of the Edmonton uh, group, is that I got my genetics done, and I thought I was mainly Ukrainian. Well, from thousands of years ago, from all the movement that's taken place for all of us, we're all from nomadic tribes. I am 5% South Asian. So that's 1.5% uh, Sri Lankan Tamil. And so I studied yoga in Tamil Nadu. I got pulled back to Tamil Nadu. I'm 1.5% Punjabi, 1.4% Gujarati, and 0.6% Bengali. And my second marriage to was, was to a Bengali person who lived in a small village 100 miles northwest of Calcutta. And when I entered that village, I knew I had been called there to help those people, that I had taken a vow in a past life to come back. So when I was in university, my second year, um, I was studying to be a Russian professor. And in the second month of the second year, seven of us were sitting in the meditation room and someone said, let's go to India. The Beatles had just gone and it was kind of the fad to want to go there. So that was a Wednesday. On the Thursday, we quit university. And on the Monday, I was on a train for Eastern Canada. And within a week, I was in London, England, stayed there for six um, months, and then traveled overland to India, arriving in Amritsar, going to the Golden Temple first. Ah, my Punjabi roots came through. <laughs> So I was called like immediately to India and I had never wanted to go there. I always wanted to go to Japan. So I traveled with my boyfriend and um, as so Regina was saying that we uh, traveled all the way from the North to the South and we got married in Kulu in the Kulu Valley. And we were living in a place called Manali. And ultimately, we, the middle name of my daughter is Manali. So my first six months in India, I cried every day. It was so hard. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I didn't know anything about anything in regards to the world, and especially living third class. And in, in my almost nine years in India, it was always third class. And so I have a, a deep understanding of poor people <laughs> and, and what it's like to live with nothing, to have mice running in my hair, to walk in the village and almost step on a poisonous snake, to walk through the beauty of the, the, the mustard when it's in flower and, and uh, see the cobras slithering through the fields and, and uh, living in a thatched roof house. Here is me in uh, West Bengal. I don't know if you can see in the village, 100 miles northwest of Calcutta. And there's another one of myself with, um, these were my, my relatives. As you can see, I'm quite tall <laughs> compared to them. But India is really in my heart and soul. And Baba kept on pulling me back there. I spent a year minus three days the first time. I studied yoga with Swami Gitananda in, uh, outside of Pondicherry and just loved it. 
And in 1971 um, and 72, I saw Krishnamurti and uh, had darshan from the mother and Sri Aurobindo, the mother. And then in April of that year, uh, I had to leave India. So we went and saw Sachi Sai Baba. And it was in Whitefield. I had no idea who he was. And actually, to tell you the truth, I wasn't really interested. And there was hardly anybody there. There was just about 20 of us. And he was walking around. And I got wonderful feelings in my heart from him. And we were called up to his room. He, he was quite young then. And um, I know that he hooked me then or lassoed my heart. Something, something happened. But Mentally, I wasn't, wasn't ready at all for that commitment. So I traveled around the world for three years and always did yoga. I've been doing yoga constantly, you know, in these 50 years and loving every moment of it. And then I came back to Canada and had um, um, three children. And when they were older, I was again called back to India. And this time, I was called back to receive some titles in New Delhi from Vishwa and Yaya Samsad. Um, and there I met a yogi from West Bengal who had, you know, in India, they have uh, yoga competitions. And he had attained first place in 1983. And then he set up the first yoga ashram in Kathmandu, Nepal. And he kept on saying to me, come to your Himalayan mountain home. And I went, what? What's this all about? So we went down to South India and um, I received more titles. And I went there and my whole life transformed. I left my country, my home, my children, my ex-husband, my family, everything that I knew again and went to India. But you know, as soon as I land in India and, and get to Kanat uh, place, go to the circle and start shopping, right away I'm back. I buy the clothes, I'm in India. I am there. <laughs> I, I feel comfortable. And I feel like Baba has blessed me to, to be introduced to many different religions, facets of religions. And wherever I went in these religions, I was always, um, what shall I say, respected and honored. And I think it's by Swami's grace. And also all of us who, who are devotees of his, um, I think we're older souls and have been around a few times. So in 1990. Six, I had a chance to see him again. And I was really disappointed because I went in um, end of January and of course, thousands of devotees there in Puttaparthi and, uh, and, and I wasn't chosen to go see him. And so I really in my heart wanted to see him so badly. And, and um, I went back to Kathmandu and was told that there was a, a nice little yoga center in a home. And in that home, the Nepalese woman was, was a great devotee, but her husband wasn't. He was a colonel, and he kept on telling her, no, 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 you can't have a center here. And he had gone down, um, she had gone down to see Baba, and she had all these uh, pictures and, and wanted to put them all up, and he kept on saying no. Then one day he was sitting in his home, and from the wall, the booty started coming, so much so that they had to call the fire department, because he, he wasn't sure what it was. And so finally he said, okay, okay, you can have a center here. And so my dance teacher, I, I, am, um, I am a teacher and holder of a dance from the eighth century. It's a tantric uh, Buddhist dance from the Nawari tribe. And it's to bring peace to those who watch and to those who dance the dance. So my teacher took me to the Sai Center and it was just a home. And while I was there, I started having these incredible heart openings and I love to dance. So I got up and was dancing. Some of the people had left. And then all of a sudden I came to and I said, 
yeah, oh, I'm sorry, you know, like, uh, again, I'm the only Westerner there. And, and um, they said, no, 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 Baba has called you here. You, you do what you want. So I picked up a Murdungue and started playing the drum and dancing and just, I could see Baba dancing with me and Krishna. And uh, the beautiful woman whose home it was and who was a great devotee of Baba, she could also see it. And she was telling them, the rest of the people there that she could see that as well. So on Baba's chair, a flower jumped off. It was a corn flower with a lovely honey smell. And I still have it to this day. And it smells just as sweet and fresh as it did then. And of course, there were pictures with Vibhuti and Halud and Amri just flowing. And they had a side table where they put um, little vials or containers. And they said within a day to five days, there was also um, something that would manifest in there for the people to take home. Sometimes there were even diamonds and, and other precious jewels. So I just had a little, remember the old uh, film canisters that people used to use? So I had a film canister and I put it down and uh, then I left. When I came back the following week, uh, I, I was confused. I was looking and it wasn't there. So it had a tape around it, a light, a light brown tape that they used to use for packing. And when I looked at it, I saw Shirdi Baba. And then on one side I was sitting and on the other side, my Indian husband, Yogacharya, Dr. Sushil Bhattacharya. So, so I took it to this woman and she, she saw that too. So, um, and my, my container was full of uh, Sindur, and I had a container of honey, as, or not honey, amri, but tasted like honey. So when I left there and went back to Canada, um, Sorogene has, has been pulling me back all the time to Baba. I feel like I'm a wayward student, but I keep coming back. Um, this is me when I'm doing that sacred dance. So you see, I had... Uh, the Indian part of me is very strong. And then this is um, in yoga. So yoga, meditation, Baba's grace has been with me, I believe, my whole life. And the village life was hard. I mean, I went through a lot of really, really difficult things. But I was also taken to many, many sacred sites where Western people never go. And I am eternally grateful. And I feel Baba's message to me was love all, serve all. And love hurts. Like sometimes it feels like your heart is actually cracking open. And other times it's that lotus flower blossoming. And some of you I'm sure have felt that as well. So I, when, when I was 16, I was sitting up in a tree and I decided then and there that I wanted to be a wise old woman. But I did not realize all of the challenges, all of the life lessons, all of the different places. I was taken all over the world. And I was told in India that wherever we travel, we have been there before in another lifetime. And we just have to touch down and, and replenish that energy within us. So as we love, the blessings grow. As we serve, the blessings grow. And I used to think, oh, you know, like all these yoga teachers are teaching thousands of people, some of them, until I realized that if I can just share the love and that quality of service with one person and they get it and they also do the same, then those are Baba's teachings to the Supreme. When I was traveling, I had that first year, I had nothing. I had a bag and it would shrink to maybe a little purse size or it would grow. So I also realized that we need nothing and as I grow older, I'm 74 now, um, I'm grateful for all of the experiences. 
um, I was my own worst enemy. <laughs> you know, my mind was my own worst enemy. And as I become <clears throat> um, more mindless, I become more mindful, if you get what I mean. As the mind empties and just appreciates the moment, um, I feel even more blessings coming from Baba and just everything I look at and everything that appears and all the sweet people around me. Um, it's said that in our awareness, most people are point of four seconds behind reality. And in that point four seconds, like when we look at something, point four seconds, in that point four seconds, we think, we start to think and analyze and criticize and all of that. So what Baba and the great teachers are teaching us is that direct perception, the direct perception of pain, direct perception of pleasure, direct perception of love, direct perception of seeing this world as it really is. It's just um, an honor. We, we are so honored to have such a great um, teacher and lover of humanity, to have the divine in our hearts. So Regina and I were talking yesterday and she says that, you know, it's like, it, it's all one. It's in, in her heart. It's like, Baba doesn't want us to, to bow down to him and follow him. He wants us to be him. Because we are. You all touch my heart. Lots, lots of love to you. And thank you for listening to my little story. I have many more. <laughs> but um, I love you. I serve you. Thank you. <laughs>